So often in analytical chemistry, we're plotting data on a calibration curve where we have concentration on the x-axis and some response on y. And we'll use a number of standards and plot the, those points on our curve. Then what we end up doing is determining the equation for a line through those data points or what we call linear least squares analysis. So we end up finding, finding an equation for the line, and uh, you know typically our equation for the line is y equals mx plus b. But because we're analytical chemists, we're going to include errors which, with each of these values. So there's going to be some error in y, which we'll call s sub y. There will be some error uh, in our slope. So we'll do plus or minus s sub m, uh, and that's going to be times x plus our intercept and its error. So uh, you can calculate all of these errors by hand. You can even do the, the linear least squares regression analysis by hand. Um, but you can also do uh, linest in Excel, and I'm sure there are other programs and other ways of doing least squares analysis. Uh, your book does go over line s in Excel um, and I highly recommend uh, setting up an Excel spreadsheet to to do that. Uh, it's super useful. So uh, you also need to be able to ca uh, calculate the errors in y, m, and b. And um, the other thing you're going to do, so you know, often when we're making a calibration curve, is we want to determine the response of an unknown, and then from that, figure out its concentration using our calibration curve. So we're looking for x. We're gonna find the concentration of an unknown. That's just one of the examples of a way that we use a calibration curve. Uh, but it's important to realize that the concentration that we get from the curve will have an error associated with it. So um, what we will do is determine the error in that concentration, or which we'll call x. Okay. I think your your the latest edition of the book calls this u sub x. Uh, earlier editions referred to this as s sub x, so you may have one of those as well. The error associated with the unknown from our calibration curve will have uh, can be calculated based on this equation. We'll do u sub x is equal to the error in y over the absolute value of the slope times, we got a big, big square root here, 1 over k plus 1 over n plus y minus y bar squared over m squared times the sum of x times x sub i minus x bar squared. And in this equation, k is equal to the number of replicate measurements of the unknown n is the number of data points on the calibration curve. So for instance, in this plot here, if each one of these uh, black circles represents a data point, one, two, three, four, five, we have five data points, so n would be five. Y bar is the average value uh, of y 
for the points on the calibration curve. X sub i are the individual values of x on the calibration curve. And x bar is the mean value of x on the calibration curve. So the only thing we didn't list here is y. y is going to be the response from the unknown. So that'll go in there, okay? So you use this equation to calculate the error in a concentration that you get from a calibration curve. Now some of you may think, well, I have this equation, why not just propagate the uncertainty? That doesn't give you the same result. In fact, it gives you an incorrect error. Because, oh, come here. What this equation is doing is basically um, describing the way in which error increases along x when you get far away from the middle of the calibration curve. So here's our line again, and here's our fit. Okay, The error associated with that actually increases as you get further away from the middle point of the calibration curve, something like that. So if you were to find the error in x, Okay, maybe this isn't the best drawing, but it gets larger as uh, you extend out beyond the middle of the calibration curve. This is why we make uh, effort to have a calibration curve that encompasses the possible unknown concentration of, of your unknown. Um, okay. So this is another reason why extrapolation uh, from, the, from a calibration curve gives you a large set, uh, amount of error. Okay? The error expands as you get further away from the center of the calibration curve. So when you are calculating the error associated with a concentration from a calibration curve, make sure you use this equation.